I'm gonna show you how I made this rifle in Blender from start to finish. We're not even gonna do an intro this time, but my new ebook is out, and all the tools and techniques you're gonna see me using this video are in there, so check it out. I got my references this time by just going to this company's website. And they make a bunch of different guns, so I can just browse this catalog of the various guns that they have. So I just picked one, I opened it up, and I saved some of the pictures that I found on this page. You can load your reference image into your scene in Blender by pressing Shift A, go down to Image, and hit Reference. When you're modeling the hand grip for a gun like this, you have to be very careful with how you place your geometry, your loop cuts, and all this other shit. So if you're trying to create this, make sure you do exactly what I'm about to do. First, I'm going to add a cube, and I'll scale that cube down. This is going to be the base of the grip. This is where the hand grip connects with the receiver. So it's most important to get the right width for this cube, because this is going to be the thickness of the receiver. And I'm going to align this with my blueprint. I'll place it in this corner over here. I'll push the back face backwards. I'll push the lower face further down. And now this approximately lines with this cuboid kind of shape that you have over here in the reference image. So here's the super important part that you have to copy. Add a loop cut like this and place it on this part over here. Then add another loop cut like this and one more on the right side which is supposed to align with this little corner. Now I'm going to take this face over here in this corner, I'll extrude it out and I'll align the vertices with this little thing sticking out on the back of the hand grip. Then I'm just going to extrude it a couple more times by doing control click and control click again to take it all the way to the end. After you've done that, you can align the vertices a little bit better once again. Now we're going to move this geometry down here, so we put this at a bit of an angle. And we also have to move this on forwards a little bit to bring it closer to the edge here. Then we have to extrude these two faces from the bottom. And once we extrude them, we're going to align them with some part which is just above this little part sticking out here. So something like this is going to do it for now. We can add another loop cut over here to get this curved shape in the back. And then I'll extrude the bottom once again so I get all the way to the bottom of the hand grip at the reference image. Now I'm going to take these faces from the sides of the hand grip as well as the two faces at the bottom. With those faces selected, I'll press I to inset. Make sure the edge rail is checked for this. And we're going to scale this part up on the x-axis so that this part of the hand grip is a little bit wider so that you can actually hold this thing hard when you're going to shoot somebody. Down here, I'm going to take these two vertices and I'll join them with J. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now I can slide these two middle edges at the front and the back backwards. And I have to go up here to mesh merge by distance. Now I have a shortcut set for this function to shift W. I also often refer to this tool as remove doubles because this is what it used to be called in the old versions of Blender. So every time you see me use the shortcut shift W or every time you hear me say remove doubles, this is actually what I mean. Now we need to select these three faces in the front here and from side view we're going to extrude those and slide these edge loops up and down a little bit so they look a little bit more like this little bulge down here. Now if you're just trying to make a low poly model this might even be good enough but I am going to subdivide this and if you want to subdivide this then watch what I'm about to do. Control 1 or Control 2 is going to give this a bit of subdivision. And while we're at it, I'm also going to make this upper part a little bit wider. Now, I'm going to select a bunch of edges that go around this top surface here. And with Control B, I'm going to bevel those. And the bevel needs to have two segments and a shape of one. And this corner also has to be a little bit tighter. It can't be this round. So I need one more loop cut this way and another loop cut up here. These edges over here should not be too close together because if they're too close together, when you add smooth shading, it's going to look a little bit too tight and unnatural. It's supposed to be a nice smooth curve here. So we need to make sure that these edges are far apart and that the distribution between them is even. One way to do that is to select these two edge loops, go up here to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in loop tools, check this add-on, and then hit W, loop tools, space, and W, loop tools, relax. These two tools are going to help you control the distribution of your edges to make them a little bit more constant. Now we're going to slide these edges down here to make this turn here a little bit tighter. And this is the same thing that would have happened over here in the back if we would have brought these edges together. So when you're subdividing something, it's very important to pay attention to how close your geometry is. I'm also going to slide these backwards so that I can have the same effect from the front. And now we got a beautiful tight corner up here on top. We're going to have to adjust the shape over here. So I'll align some of these vertices with my reference image to kind of create the same curve that we have in the background here. And later on, this is also going to make it a lot easier to UV unwrap this because we're just going to have a surface over here which is going to be very similar to this shape in the back here. And that way we'll be able to apply a custom texture to this specific area over here. Now I'm going to add an extra loop cut over here just because I can and I'm going to need some more vertices to create this semicircle. Now I'll use my brush select tool to select these faces over here. These are the faces that surround the area of the circle and make sure to do this in wireframe view so you also select the same faces on the other side as well as the faces on the bottom. Now we gotta inset those with I and make sure that your edge rail is checked. If your edge rail is not checked you might get some fucked up twisting on the edges so make sure to check that. And now we can delete those faces that we still have selected and we have a very nice face loop here which we can use to shape out the semicircle. 
So the semicircle is gonna go from this vertex over here and to the other vertex on this side. So I'll go over here, check statistics, and if I select all of these vertices on this side, there are exactly eight vertices. So since we have eight vertices over here, this is supposed to be exactly half of a circle, and this includes the two vertices on the exact middle of the circle. Which means if we were to complete the circle, we would have to copy these vertices from this side onto the other side. Now there are six vertices on this side, so if we copy six vertices to the other side, there's gonna be six plus eight vertices, which is 14, which means we need a circle with 14 vertices. So place the 3D cursor between these two vertices here, go to side view, shift A, add a new circle with 14 vertices and you can align that circle with your view. Now scale this down, and we can select two opposite vertices and fill them, and that way it's a little bit easier to see how we're aligning this circle. We have to align this edge that connects these opposite vertices with the reference image. So we'll place it somewhere in the middle of this little semicircle, and now we can scale this up and align it with this exact part of the reference. Now I'm going to delete all the edges down here at the bottom side, as well as the edge that connects the middle. So X, delete edges. And I'm also going to delete this entire edge loop on the bottom of the hand grip. So now I have seven edges on this semicircle and seven edges on this part over here. So I can just select both of them, loop tools, bridge edge loops. Now I want to add some bevels to all of these corners to make this part look a little bit tighter and sharper. So I'll select all of these edge loops that you're looking at right now. And with control B, I'm going to add a small bevel there. When the shape is set to one, the bevel has a right angle corner here. And giving it two segments means it's basically the same as adding one loop cut to this side of the edge and one loop cut to this side of the edge. And that makes the corner nice and tight when you have subdivision surface activated. Now I need to add some more bevels down here. So I'm going to select all of these edge loops so I'm going to select all of the edge loops at the bottom of the hand grip but instead of taking the bevel this way to the front I'm going to continue up here and take this bevel all the way around back here this way when I bevel this I'm also going to get a sharper cut over here on the side which is just gonna make my front part look a little bit nicer now obviously I'm gonna move some of these vertices around and slide them back and forth a little bit to prevent some of this weird twisting happening here in the front and I also don't want these vertices to be that close together so I'm also gonna slide them a part of it as well now we still need half of a cylinder to fill this hole here at the bottom. So I'm going to select this edge loop over here and I'll press P to separate that to a new object. Then I'll place my 3D cursor in between these two vertices. I'll select everything and with my 3D cursor as a pivot point, I'll extrude, right click and scale down. Now we just have to figure out a way to fill this. So I'm just gonna do it manually by selecting edges, filling shit in, loop cutting and whatever else. Once I fill this with all quads, I'll select this in object mode, then select the hand grip and press Control J to join them back into the same object. And I want to take these two edge loops from the corners here. And with P, I'll separate those as well. And I'll join that with Control J onto the semicircle surface that I just created. Now I'll merge by distance to connect everything. I'll put the 3D cursor on the middle vertex here at the back. I'll apply the mirror modifier, but I'm first going to put it up above the subdivision surface modifier, because whenever you apply something, usually it's best that that modifier is on top of the stack. So control A, go to edit mode, select everything, merge by distance just in case, and we're gonna go to face, grid fill. This will automatically create a perfect quad only surface at the bottom. We can also do the same thing with the edge loop on top here. So face, grid fill once again, and everything will be filled with quads. Now in a reference, there are some kind of lines here, and these are for grip or something. I don't know what this button is for, but Modeling those will be way too complicated for this video, so we're gonna add those with normal maps later. Until then, object, shade smooth, and I don't want to join these two objects into the same place because that way next time I merge by distance, these vertices are going to be merged and I don't want to merge those. So instead I'll just select this, then shift select this, control B parent, keep transform, and that way they'll move together. I have to make some extra space here in the front by moving some of this stuff around a little bit. And why not add another loop cut up here just so we have some extra geometry so we can make a little octagon over here. Before we do that, let's make sure everything is clean up here. So maybe we have to slide something back and forth. Now with loop tools, we're gonna turn this into a circle and we're gonna extrude this circle and bring it there by scaling it to zero on the x-axis while the 3D cursor is the pivot point. Then delete the faces at the bottom of this hole and this is gonna connect because of the mirror modifier. Since we're going so crazy with the details in the hand grip, let's add another thing here. Put the 3D cursor on the middle of this little hole and there's supposed to be a little screw in here to hold the two halves of this hand grip together, I assume. Then add a tiny plane, which is aligned with your view. Take the top edges, extrude them, right click, scale them up on the Z axis by three, and the two side middle edges, extrude them, right click, and scale them up on the Y axis by three. Now subdivide and take all the edges on the outline of this little plus shape, then extrude, right click, scale them up, loop tools, circle, and just like that, we have a little screw shape. We just have to extrude some of the geometry. Now we can just subdivide this a couple of times and object shade smooth and it's good to go once we place it in the hole here. 
and now the hand grip is gonna be ready to go. Now let's make the receiver. The first part that we're gonna focus on is going to be this surface up here, which is defined by this border and this line in the front over here. This is the part that holds the magazine. And when we make this, we kinda have to pay attention to the topology, otherwise everything is gonna get fucked up and we're not gonna be able to add all these details over here. So do what I'm doing. I'm gonna place my 3D cursor in the middle of this little semicircle peninsula type of thing in the front here. And I'm going to add a circle with eight vertices. Align that circle with your view and we're gonna make it very small. We're gonna make it small enough so that it fits inside this little part sticking out, but so that there's still a bit of space between this and the edge of the reference picture here. Now select a circle, go to face, grid fill. Now we're gonna have to change the positions of the vertices in the top right corner and the lower right corner. Place the 3D cursor in the middle and select all the vertices from the top to the bottom on the left side. Then extrude those right click and scale them up a little bit and bring this all the way to the edge of the reference. Now rearrange some of these vertices so they align with the reference better and then extrude some more geometry at the top here and make sure you take care of this little bump that goes up here. So extrude one edge over here and we can just extrude this and take it all the way to the other side of this surface and this surface ends right here below this little corner here and you can see there's a little line which we can just barely see. It takes a curve down here then it takes another turn and it gets to the part where you actually put in the magazine. We're gonna extrude this edge a couple of times and bring it down here. I'm gonna do this in two or three steps like this and I'll snap this vertex right here to the next step and then we're gonna extrude another vertex from down here, connect this to the top and this part over here we're gonna do separately. So we need an extra face down here. Otherwise it would have a very long face and we don't really wanna have that, do we? Now we can extrude this and bring it all the way down. Just make sure you scale it to zero on the Z axis and you might have to push it in a little bit further on the reference here. Just to keep things organized, I'm gonna select this edge loop, go to W, loop tools, G stretch and I'll set that to project. And now I'll make a loop cut which is going to be placed right above this part, right above this edge of this surface right here. Now we're going to create another circle with 8 vertices and we're going to align that with our view and then scale it down. And this is going to be used to shape this corner right here which is kind of like a 90 degree turn. So again go to face grid fill, then place the cursor on the bottom vertex and duplicate this side right here, rotate by 180 and that's going to create the other turn right here. This one has to be snapped to the side and we can align it with the top here as well as this one on this side. Then we need a loop cut up here which we're going to align with this part of the circle and another loop cut in the middle so that we can connect this easily. And we need some loop cuts on this side which are going to be aligned with the vertices right here. So place my cursor right here, give me a loop cut on this side and scale it to zero on the Z axis. Now it's perfectly aligned, which means we can fill this and everything's gonna be nice and clean. Do the same one more time with this vertex, scale it to zero on the Z axis, fill it again, and do that as many times as you have to until you have a matching number of vertices on this side and this side. You can speed up the process once you have a frame and just go to face, grid fill. Now bring these vertices in the bottom a little bit lower and then use the knife tool to place it at the beginning of this bump right here that goes right around the hole for the magazine. So click over here, then press C to cut through and run the knife tool directly along this edge. So click somewhere on the other side, hit enter and we're good to go. We're gonna have to push everything inwards a little bit here because we need a bit of extra space on this side so that we can create an extra set of faces which we're gonna be able to bevel later because we are going to use a subdivision surface modifier here. So we're gonna start extruding these edges outwards a little bit. So the best way to create an even set of faces on this side is to add some thickness to the entire surface first, then select this side of faces, go to side view, extrude, right click and use alt S and this is gonna evenly distribute these and push them outwards a little bit. After we do that, we're gonna have to redo the knife tool because we did that a bit too early. Now we're going to place our 3D cursor right over here on this edge at the top of this circle above the trigger. Then we're going to add a plane and in edit mode, go to X, collapse, edges and faces. This is gonna collapse all the geometry into singularity. So now we just have one vertex which we can extrude to shape something out. Extrude that to the side and bring it all the way to the edge right where we have this line above the trigger. Also on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We might have to lower this down a little bit. Now make a loop cut right in the middle. And it's gonna be easier to see what you're doing if you extrude this up so you can see a whole edge instead of just a single vertex. And bevel this until you get to the top of this curve. At this point, the line here turns straight. So now we have edges right at the end of this curve and we can bring this up and align it with the curve. Then extrude the edges into the sides and push them apart. And this whole surface has to be pushed a little bit inside into the gun. It has to be a little bit lower than this part for the magazine. Take this edge loop from the bottom, extrude it backwards just a little bit like this and place a 3D cursor at this vertex right here so we can take the other vertex, scale it up like this away from the 3D cursor and then we'll place the 3D cursor on this vertex and we'll select the other vertex in the back and scale that while your 3D cursor is the pivot point by pressing S, Shift, Y. That's going to scale it on the X and the Z axis, not the Y axis. Set the scale to zero, hit enter. And now if you look at these two vertices from the side, 
they're going to be perfectly aligned on these two axes. And while your 3D cursor is still here, take these two vertices on the other side and align those as well with the 3D cursor using S, Shift, Y, 0. And now make a loop cut in the middle, delete the left side, and place the 3D cursor on the middle segment right here so we can duplicate everything, scale to minus one on the Y axis, then merge vertices by distance and invert normals or whatever else you gotta do. We might have to bring all this a little bit closer together. Now the reason we did this is so that when we subdivide this, it's going to look really nice once we add some bevels to these edges. We're not going to add the bevels yet, but once we do, it's gonna create a really beautiful shape and a really nice curve over here, okay? And before we continue, let's place this surface right on the edge of the hand grip right here so it fits this corner. And we're also gonna bring out the magazine part of the receiver right here. I'll place my cursor right here to make this part a little bit thicker. And then I'll place my 3D cursor on the middle of the hand grip. So that way I can take this edge loop at the bottom, extrude it, right click, scale it to zero on the X axis. And I'm also going to place my origin point there so that way I can use a mirror modifier. I'll place the mirror modifier above the subdivision surface modifier. And I wanna have a loop cut somewhere back here so I can delete these faces and create a hole at the bottom of this shape. This is where I'm going to put the objects which create the frame for the trigger. I don't know if this is technically accurate. I just know that it's gonna look good, all right? Over here in the back of the receiver, we're going to need a special type of shape. It's going to be like one quarter of the inside of a torus or a donut. It's hard to explain, so just watch what I'm doing. I'm going to push this one edge a little bit further backwards, and this way it almost has that type of shape. If I subdivide this a couple of times, it's basically going to give me the type of curve that I need here. So there are two edges selected right here, which I can extrude upwards, and then I can rotate them a little bit and place them differently so that they align with the back part of the hand grip. I can also do control click, and they're going to follow my mouse as they get extruded. Now I just need a loop cut here to connect this vertex. Give me one more horizontal loop cut for this vertex, and the rest I'm just going to extrude upwards and align it with the top while my 3D cursor is up here. We're gonna fill in the back side here, and now we have the basic shape for this part of the receiver so we can start adding some bevels. And finally, I'm going to make this corner here a little bit tighter. We can also bevel this edge loop to control this shape. Now we can bring the grip back up and it should connect pretty well here. If it doesn't, we can just adjust some of these vertices here a little bit so that this curve fits perfectly. Now let's place a 3D cursor in the middle right here, delete the back side of the front part of the receiver for the magazine, then take this edge loop scale it to zero on the X axis, place the origin there as well, and that way we can also use a mirror modifier here. Now let's get back to the front part of the receiver where we have to make the hole for the magazine. Around this hole is like an edge which kind of sticks out. You can see the shape of this bump over here from side view, and it has the same shape if you would look at it from the front, it's just sloping downwards. This can be a little bit tricky, so watch this. First, let's take the edges from the side and extrude those out a little bit on the x-axis. I don't know which way your models rotate it, but my x-axis is this way. And we're going to place the 3D cursor exactly in between the first and the last vertex. Then I'm going to select the vertices from the back and the vertices from the front, while my 3D cursor is exactly between them and exactly on this edge. It's very important you're doing exactly what I'm doing. I gotta be precise here. Then extrude, right click, S, Shift, X, and that way we're scaling them on all the axes except the X axis. And just extrude them out a little bit so that it has approximately the same thickness as this side right here. Now we can take this entire edge that goes around here and push it down a little bit, but we are going to make the corners meet like this. Otherwise, we're gonna have a quad here which is gonna bend in a weird way and we don't really want that. Now we can start shaping it like this part right here so we can just extrude it down Maybe push this vertex a little bit further down. And we can even add an extra loop cut so that we can reshape this a little bit more easily. Just make sure you have a loop cut at the top here to control this shape so it doesn't bend too much. If you want to change the angle of this thing, don't just rotate it. Select all the horizontal edge loops on this part, then set the pivot point to individual origins and scale it up or down on the z-axis. This way it's just going to shift so it's going to look like it's rotated differently, but the shape is not changed anywhere and you're not gonna fuck up your topology. Now it's time to bevel these edge loops so that we have a little bit more control over these corners right here. So we're gonna just add a small bevel, two segments and shape one. Now we're going to fill this face with an end gone, place the 3D cursor in the middle of this edge on the inside, and we have to extrude this and scale it down towards the 3D cursor. So that has to be the pivot point. This face is going to be used to make the hole, so you want to scale it so that when you push it up, it doesn't stick out of the sides here. So once we extrude it and move it up on the z-axis, it's not going to be visible from the outside anywhere, so this should be good. Now you can delete this terrible end gone, as well as the face on the inside here. We just have to bevel this edge on the underside here. Then there's this little shape that sticks out right here, and this is where you have the button which you press if you want to take out the magazine, if you want to reload so you can shoot more people. We're gonna use our knife tool right up here on the side of this little shape, so K, limit that to the Z axis, and press C to cut through. Do the same thing on the other side. You can even bevel these and it's gonna give you more edges that are going to be perfectly vertical. Now we're going to select all the faces on the side right here, as well as this face on the top of this bump. 
we're going to inset that make sure the edge rail is checked for this it's very important otherwise you're going to get this weird twisting and we definitely don't want that here and inset it just enough so it's as wide as this shape right here it's kind of hard to see it in reference so just pay attention we don't want to do this at the top so delete this top segment we can even delete these faces for now and just bring this up with the 3d cursor then place the cursor on the outer edge here select all the faces except that face at the bottom extrude right click scale to zero on the x-axis and now they're aligned with this edge down here so we can delete this face delete this face and just snap these vertices with the 3d cursor to connect them perfectly we're probably gonna need a loop grab right here we're probably gonna have to bevel that just to tighten up these corners a little bit and we might have to slide these edges a little bit just to angle these faces from the side now this little button right here is tedious as fuck to create in terms of topology so i'm not even gonna go too deep on explaining this i'm just gonna show you a quick time lapse of what i'm doing and if you guys want to see me go this deep on topology and explain every single little tiny move that i'm doing on details like this this is the type of shit i do on my patreon you can get some more lessons for that over there now look we have this hole right here but we have to fit in the button we gotta put the actual button in which you press when you want to take out the magazine but the button has to have exactly the same shape as this hole because you want it to fit in there so we're going to duplicate this set of edges in edit mode we can separate that to a new object i'm gonna get rid of the extra vertices over here in the middle which don't define the shape at all and i'll dissolve them and now i just have to give this some kind of a grid fill now the grid fill tool kind of gets the job done, but I still have some super long faces. So I'm going to join these two vertices, maybe these two as well. And now I can do whatever I want with this circle. So I'm going to give it a little extra rim right here. Then I'll extrude this out and turn it into a sort of conical shape. I'm also going to extrude this to give it some thickness, add a loop cut here. And now I can push this out and bring it up to the surface. And based on what I see in my reference, I think this is more or less the shape that I need here. Now I got some little bullshit bumps right here. So I'll add a loop cut right here. I'll add another loop cut right here. I'm going to bevel those a couple of times. Then give me a horizontal loop cut bevel that too just because i want to have some extra geometry and now with individual origins i'm going to inset this extrude it out scale it down on the z-axis and just make sure i have the right size is what i can see in the blueprint whether you want to call it a blueprint or reference i don't care to me it's the same shit now let's get to the interesting stuff on this receiver okay we got this little switch right here and this is what you want to use if you're trying to switch between semi-auto auto or safety all right so if you're just shooting one person at a distance you want semi-auto so every time you press the trigger once you're going to shoot one bullet you're going to press every time you want to shoot if you're on full auto when you press it goes and that's what you're using if you're shooting up a school or something i'm gonna get fucking demonetized so guys follow me on instagram and join my discord when they ban my youtube channel for saying this type of shit you're still gonna be able to find some of my content so here's how i'm gonna do this i'm going to add a circle and i'm only gonna give that circle something like 16 vertices i'll make it face me and i know you're thinking i'm about to use this circle to make this little circular shape but that's not what i'm gonna use it for i'm gonna use this circle to make this little part here so i'm going to give this a grid fill and i want a loop cut right here because that way if i push the loop cut all the way to the end i can take this geometry and bring it over here to the other side now i'm going to delete the inner geometry I want to fill this and then I'm going to inset this as far as I can so I have this very long and thin shape right here. This way I can add a couple of loop cuts. I'm going to add about three loop cuts and these loop cuts are going to allow me to make these little steps that are supposed to create this shape. So I'm going to bevel all these loop cuts just to turn each edge loop into two edge loops and that way I can push this out. I'll select the outer edge loop and I'll press Control plus to expand the selection by one step. Then I'll push it backwards by minus 0.01 on the x-axis. Control plus two more times, gx minus 0.01. And now we should be good to go. So now I'm going to add another circle. And this circle can have something like 32 vertices. I'll turn it to the side. And this is what I'm going to use for this big circle right here. On this circle, I'm going to remove some of the vertices that I don't need here. Because that way I can bring this close. Maybe scale it down just a little bit. And I can snap these vertices so they connect perfectly over here on the top. And over here at the bottom. And now we're going to extrude everything to give it some thickness. And I don't really want to add subdivision surface to this because i'm gonna have to deal with adding a bunch of polygons and fixing a bunch of n-gons i don't want to do that i'm just going to add some bevels and i'll give this some smooth shading later so once we got some bevels object shade smooth and you can see it's not bad at all give me an extra loop cut right here and one on the other side as well and now the shading's all right on this we also needed a couple of tiny little cylinders on these two locations so give me a cylinder with 24 vertices scale that down rotate it make it face us push it in here give it a little bevel object shade smooth and we're good to go we can just duplicate this to the other location now i'm looking at this model right now man i got a long fucking way to go here but bitching isn't gonna get us anywhere so let's just keep moving i'm gonna duplicate this edge from up here and i'm gonna use that to extrude some more geometry out of it this is what's going to outline the frame for the trigger let's separate this let's extrude it up then extrude it down but this one only has to get up to about here scale this one down add some extra loop cuts and just scale the loop cut until its vertices are meeting this line in the reference image right here 
Now we're gonna extrude the edges from the sides and scale them up on the y-axis, but on individual origins, we're gonna scale them down to zero on the y-axis and delete the faces in the middle. Now it looks like we're gonna have to push this a little bit further inward so that we match this area over here. And don't worry about this curve here because when we extrude this and delete the top face, this is gonna be nice and sharp and it's gonna connect here perfectly. This curvy part here is gonna need a little bit more geometry. So we're gonna extrude these edges a little bit further down. Maybe we can push this a little bit closer so they don't stick through anything here. And we're gonna push these apart so that they have this convenient angle right here that we can use to extrude this area out. You see how when we extrude this, it's subdivided. These right angles are turned into curves, which is gonna perfectly fit this shape. And this is the part we have a kind of hinge which connects this little bridge under the trigger. I don't know why this thing is there. I guess you can open this up and now you can maybe change the trigger or something like that. Who the fuck knows? Let me know in the comments if you're a gun expert. And since I want this to be symmetrical on both sides, I'll delete this face. So when I put my 3D cursor over here in the middle, I can just duplicate this and scale it by minus one on the Y axis. And then I can just connect everything over here and have a perfectly symmetrical frame. Now I might have to add some extra loop cuts like this. That way I'll have more geometry, which is gonna allow me to have more control over this shape. But since I changed some shit now, I'm gonna have to delete this side and mirror it again. Now I need the origin point of this object to be exactly in the middle of the gun. So I'll place it right here with the 3D cursor. Then I'll push this inwards a little bit because this is supposed to be thin enough to fit in this hole. I don't know if this is really like this guys. I just think this kind of looks cool. This is the best way I figured out to make this gun. So I'll just do it my way. I should be a gun designer. So look, now I'm gonna extrude all of these edges and I'll also scale them towards the middle, which is marked by the 3D cursor. And I'm going to select the right angle edges over here on the sides. I'll press Shift G, similar face angles. And that way it's instantly going to select all the edges which have a right angle. Now I can just bevel this and this shape is now sharper on the sides. I guess I have to figure out a way to connect this at the top because I can't just have a hole here. So first of all, I'm gonna have to extrude this up and give this edge here a bevel. And then I'm going to take some of the vertices from this edge right here separate that and this is going to be the upper part of the trigger frame i just have to figure out a way to connect everything here but i'll just use my 3d cursor for that so i'm going to align this with the bottom vertex here then i'll add a loop cut and connect it right here and now i can also just bridge edge loops just because i want to keep these edges right here in the same place i'm gonna lift this up a little bit so i can connect this bevel over here and forget about this part we're gonna mirror this one more time so let's just extrude this up here fill this little gap Maybe add an extra loop cut here and there, but this is more or less good to go. So let's make sure we got the exact middle with our 3D cursor. I'll place a loop cut right there. We can delete this whole side, and I'm just going to mirror everything with my 3D cursor. It doesn't connect perfectly, so I just got to bring it forward just a little bit. Now that everything's connected, object, shade smooth, and look at how good that looks. Now we got to make this bridge right here. And here's my idea for how to do that. First of all, I'm going to need to make the hinges because the hinges are going to be a circular shape, which it perfectly aligns with the outline of this peninsula right here. And this is going to be an octagon. So I can just create a small octagon. The vertices of that octagon should align. So if they don't align, you can just use your 3D cursor to snap this shit in place. Now, first thing, I'm going to make a hole in this little shape right here so I can fit the hinge in there. So I'll select four faces, inset those, uncheck boundary, and let's just delete all these faces. Now we can separate the circle from this, join it in right here, scale to zero on the x-axis, and that's going to give us a nice template for the inside of this thing. It looks like we're gonna have to inset one face further up. So let's do that. We just gotta align everything with a 3D cursor. And I'm gonna do the same thing below. So I'll delete this face, inset this one, align this edge right here. Then I can just snap this one, delete this face, and I'm good. Now I'll put my 3D cursor in the middle, extrude these edges, scale to zero on the x-axis, remove doubles, and we got a perfect hole right here. Now we just gotta shade smooth, add some supporting loops, inset some faces just so this isn't that round. And now we're gonna be good. So we can use this new octagon on the inside to make the actual hinge. Let's separate that, extrude it, delete the faces in the back and the front. And now I'm going to rotate this so I can use three faces from the front here to make the bridge. I'm going to inset those and now I can extrude this to start making the bridge. Now different parts of the bridge have a different width. So I'm going to delete these faces in the front and I'll slide this a little bit backwards so I have more or less a straight cut at the end here. Now I can scale this down a little bit, but only on the Y and the Z axis. I don't want to scale this down on the X axis. I don't want it to get thinner on the X axis. I just want it to get thinner this way. Then I can just duplicate this edge loop and place it on a couple of places over here. And then I'm going to mirror the hinge first. And at this point I'm thinking, man, why am I mirroring everything manually? Let me just place a mirror modifier over here. I'll need my origin in the middle. We're already mirroring this on the X axis, but we're also gonna mirror it on the Y axis. And we can also make this bridge here part of the same object. Just don't remove any doubles because this is supposed to be a separate object. You don't want to accidentally merge any vertices here. Now we can apply the mirror modifier. Right away, we're gonna separate this to new object. Now we're going to tighten up the edges here a little bit with some supporting loops, add some loop cuts here and there, 
push them out to the sides and we have this bridge down here i don't know if you're supposed to be able to open this but i'm going to place my origin point right here so that way we can easily pivot this and kind of open it up if we want to we're not going to do this but just in case i feel like this whole thing should probably be a little bit wider but i really like how this looks so i'm not even going to touch anything it's starting to look pretty damn cool isn't it we got this stupid little detail up here that I've been procrastinating on. I really don't feel like making it, but we gotta make it, so let's get to it. This one's gonna be pretty simple. I'm just gonna snap my 3D cursor in this little gap right here. And by the way, I created this more or less the same way that I created this. You saw a little speed run of that. I essentially just extruded some geometry. You can figure this out by yourself by now. I didn't want to show you everything because this video is already going to be long as fuck. I don't want to make it two hours. Now let's place a tiny little cube here. We're gonna scale it up. It's supposed to start up here and end down here. Now, I can't really see the shape of this from the side, and I'm not going to go Googling for any more references, but I think it's something like this. It's more or less the same height as this surface over here. I just need to add a loop cut right here, bevel that. I'll need another loop cut like this. Then I'm going to have to delete some of the faces in the front here, and I'm going to bevel this so that I can make a little curved dent on the inside here. I think it's something like this. Now I can just take these edge loops, W bridge edge loops, and that should be it. Now down here, I'm going to add some more loop cuts so I can make this a little bit more round and circular so once i subdivide this this is gonna look pretty nice and up here we have this pedal looking thing i have no idea what that's for somebody tell me in the comments but we're gonna extrude this out like this then add some more geometry so we can give this a round kind of racket shape or whatever the hell this is now control 2 to subdivide this shift g select similar face angles to instantly select all the right angles and now we're going to bevel this and give me an extra loop cut up here and these little lines over here that's also going to be a normal map Object shade smooth and this thing is ready. We also have some more details over here But this is also going to be a normal map as well as all this writing over here Now we're going to add a loop cut over here on the side and we're going to use the edges from that loop cut To create this little shape at the back of this cylinder This is going to lead us to the upper receiver and this is where things get fun Just to make things a little bit easier Let's get rid of these loop cuts over here on the corners Then we're going to extrude out these two faces and we need to slide this one up I'm gonna turn off my subdivision surface modifier because that's gonna make this easier to work with Let's also go back to flat shading and we're probably going to have to have a triangle over here because there's no way to really get around this especially if we want to make this part wider than this part down here if this was a quad this would just be an inverted face so we're just going to keep a triangle here then up here we're going to add a cylinder it's kind of hard to see exactly how wide this cylinder is supposed to be so we're just going to kind of eyeball it we're going to make sure it's aligned with the middle so we're going to snap it down here to the middle of the object and we're going to lift it back up now let's say this cylinder is going to be this inner part over here and then there's a little bit of a thicker layer which makes this back ring that connects everything together. So let's extrude this forward, but this segment we're going to make a little bit thicker. And now we're going to use that segment which we just made thicker to create this ring in the back that connects everything. So we're going to take some of this geometry backwards and we should probably separate this to a new object now. Let's connect this ring back here to the rest of the receiver and we're going to delete the vertices on the inside because we won't need them. We're going to connect everything down here with the 3D cursor and let's just align everything again by scaling it with the 3D cursor as a bit of Point. Now we can bring this inwards a little bit and that's going to make this kind of curved shape. We can even add some more geometry and maybe use some loop tools later to make this a little bit smoother. For example, adding another loop cut over here around the entire receiver might help a lot by just controlling this shape a little bit better. And see, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now we have to delete one entire side because we're going to do this with a mirror modifier. Let's move this shit out of the way and let's manually move all of this backwards on the Y axis. And then we're going to deselect every vertex one by one and place the rest on the place where it should be according to the reference. This is going to give us this curved shape on this ring. And it looks like this whole thing is a little bit too big. So maybe we can try to rescale it. I'll try to rescale it by putting the 3D cursor somewhere exactly in the middle of the object. Then I'll select the entire ring. I'm going to have to scale it with shift Y to exclude the Y axis from the scaling. Once we do that, we're just going to have to move some of these edges over here maybe bring them a little bit closer to make this smooth curve over here on the side of the receiver and now i think that looks pretty good so now we have to add some thickness to this ring so first of all let's find a point exactly in the middle of this circle that's going to be defined by the intersection of the normals of this vertex up here where we can place a 3d cursor we're going to duplicate this one scale it to zero on the x-axis now this is the exact middle of this circle and that's going to allow us to create some thickness for this ring now we're going to have to make sure that this is connected so let's use our 3d cursor for that and we don't want to have too much twisting over here so we're going to place the 3d cursor up here and select this edge loop down to here and move everything backwards by scaling it down on the y-axis and i'm just going to make a solid fill on this cylinder and we're later going to add some more details like these other things over here we're going to continue making the butt stock afterwards for now let's place a 3d cursor in the middle select all these edges and deselect this one extrude right click scale to zero on the x-axis and get rid of this one and now this is all quads so let's see what this looks like with a subdivision surface modifier object shade smooth 
We need an extra supporting loop over here. Another one over here. I don't really care about these vertices being very close together. I just don't want them to be too close because that way they might accidentally merge together when I do Shift W or whatever your shortcut is for merge by distance. I use Shift W. Now we're going to select all of these edges. We're going to bevel them. And that gives us this beautiful cutoff in the back that we can use for whatever else we're going to have to do back here. Now on the outside of this cylinder, we have this kind of plate, which if you look at it from the front, it will be shaped kind of like an octagon. But this shape is also connected connected to the railing on the top of the rifle where you can put your scope or something. And the rule I like to follow, and I suggest you follow this rule in general as well, is when you have an object which has some parts which are very high poly like this up here, and some parts which are very low poly like this, always start by making the high poly part and then use the geometry from that highly detailed area to create the low poly stuff. It's going to be way easier that way. If you start with the low poly part first, you're going to have to add a lot of new geometry, you're going to have to fuck everything up. So we're going to start with a tiny little cube over here and we're going to use that to shape out one of these little teeth up here. Now it's kind of hard to tell how wide this is supposed to be right now. We're going to have to base that on the rest of the stuff down here. But it's going to be something more or less like this and we can just leave that for now. We can change it later pretty easily. So let's bring this over to the other side right here. We're going to make a loop cut right down the middle and with control B we're going to turn this into two edge loops. And these two edge loops should be exactly in the middle of each of these teeth. Then just delete the other stuff on the outside. We could have just made a cube and scale it up like this. I don't know why we did it, but fuck it. Now let's add an array modifier. We're going to stack this on the y-axis and we're going to crank it up a little bit. And we're doing this because we want to make sure that each of these lines over here aligns with the middle of the tooth. We can see that each segment is a little bit too long because it skips a little bit further every single time. So in edit mode, we're going to select the right side of this segment that we're arraying. And we're going to look over here on the end. And we're going to slowly move that on the y-axis from the back. And that way everything else is going to change. And now we can see that everything is perfectly aligned. Now we need a horizontal loop cut in the middle. And we're going to scale this up on the x-axis so we have this kind of hexagonal shape. Let's add three vertical loop cuts. And we're going to make a horizontal knife cut right over here, which is going to cut the mesh through both sides. And that's going to define the bottom of this hole over here. So now we can just delete these faces. And now this is going to give us the hole up here. This is the gap between the teeth, right? Now we can select this whole edge loop, deselect the edges on the top, and just go W, bridge edge loops. Let's take the faces from the bottom and extrude them downwards. Delete the faces at the bottom now, and also delete the faces in the front and the back. We don't need those. Now let's see what this looks like when we subdivide it. Currently it looks completely stupid because we don't have any supporting loops or any bevels or anything like that, but we're going to add those in a second. And by the way, this is going to be super high poly. If you care about your polygons, don't do what I'm doing. I'm subdividing everything because I don't give a fuck. But look at my polygon count up here. I already have 206,000 edges and I don't even have half of this gun finished yet. I'm going to select some of these edges this way. Then I'll go to Shift G, similar face angles. And that's going to automatically select all the edges which I want to bevel. I'm going to change the outer mirrors over here to arc. And that's going to give me slightly better geometry over here. And I can connect that to the corners over here and that's going to give me all quads. It would also be nice if we bevel these edges like this. And that gives us a sharper point on the side. And we can also add some loop cuts down here. And now we're going to adjust the count on the array modifier just to make sure we get all the way to the end. This is enough. This part is just going to be extended further because we don't have any more holes over here. Nor on this side. So apply the array modifier. Then select everything in edit mode, shift W to merge vertices by distance. That's my shortcut. You might have something different. And now we can extrude this all the way to the end here and this all the way to the end here. Now it looks like we kind of fucked up. We're going to have to manually fill all this stuff at the end here. Now, once we're finished making the railing, we're going to use some of this geometry to make this metal plate on the side of the cylinder that we made earlier. So I'm just going to select this entire row of edges here. I'll extrude that down. I'll push it down to this line. You can see a little gradient. I'm going to place it on the middle of that gradient. Then I'll extrude it down again and place it on the middle of the next gradient. And then I can take it all the way down to the top of the lower receiver that we were making earlier. Now I'm going to add a loop cut and push it all the way to the top here. And I'm doing that because I want to be able to push all of this out a little bit. And I want to have a little tiny step here. This way, this entire surface is going to align better with this part over here. And now I'm also going to push this surface out. There's a little cut down here, which exposes the cylinder. The purpose of this cut is so that we can also connect perfectly on this lower part. Because if you notice, this edge is connected to the upper receiver here, but it's not connected on this part. There's a bit of a gap. So we're going to cut this shit out and make it connect a little bit better. So we just need a loop cut over here. I'll delete these faces and now I can slide this edge loop over here down a little bit. I can push this vertex back and this is going to give me like one quarter of an octagon, which we're going to be able to subdivide and it's going to look pretty perfect. Before we subdivide, we're still going to have to add some thickness to this shape. So I'll take some of the edges here and I'll push them backwards like this. And that way I'll be able to start connecting them to the rest of this object. And now once we've filled in this entire shape, now we can subdivide it and then we can start 
start adding some more supporting loops and some more bevels or whatever we're going to need. And once everything is filled and once we added all the bevels and the supporting loops and all this formality shit, let's duplicate this, mirror it to the other side across the 3D cursor, remove the doubles, invert to normals, and now we have the upper piece with the railing, this metal plate on the side and all this other stuff. Now I have to make a hole here in which I'm going to fit this little thing, whatever this is. And this should be pretty simple. I just have to inset some faces over here. And then while my 3D cursor is down here, I'll select these faces again, extrude them and scale them to zero on the X axis. Now I can also slide these edges back and forth or up and down a little bit. I can even use my 3D cursor to push these a bit further in this direction. And once we subdivide this, this is exactly what we were trying to make. You know when you're finished shooting at somebody you gotta take out the magazine you put in the new one and since you fired all your bullets you have to get another magazine into the chamber and to get a bullet from the magazine into the chamber you have to pull that shit in the back now the ak has got it on the side you do it like this pistol's got it from the top but these types of gun this is based on like an ar-15 or m4 i don't know what branch of weapons this is i don't know what the fuck you call this is called an mk1 you pull this thing with your two fingers on the back top of the gun right above the buttstock now i tried pretty hard to get a reference for exactly what this piece looks like and when i say i try hard i mean I searched for about three minutes and then I gave up because I don't really give a shit. But I couldn't find a good picture of this, so I'm just gonna imagine something which I think would make sense to put here. But anyway, I cut out this hole over here. I just deleted some geometry, bridge some edge loops, pretty simple stuff. So let's use P to separate these into a new object. Then I'll take an edge loop from the front and I'll bring it over here to the back. And I'll use my grid fill tool to fill that. Then I'll connect the left side to the right side. Then we're going to extrude this once and make it just a little bit wider like this. And then we're going to extrude it one more time. And the second time we extrude it, we're going to take the side faces from this extrusion. We're going to scale them up on the x-axis to push them apart. Now the idea here is that we're supposed to have a bit of a curve here. This is supposed to be like a quarter of a circle. So we might have to do some adjustments. And later when we subdivide this, this is going to look very nice. We're going to bring this all the way to the end based on our reference image in the background. Also grid fill back here. And now we can extrude this one more time to make sure it's long enough for this purpose. Now I really have no idea how wide this is actually supposed to be. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and do whatever I think makes sense. And then this shape also has some silly little details like maybe a cutout on this corner over here. I'm going to tear this vertex as well as this vertex. I'll place my 3D cursor in between these two vertices and then I'll scale this to minus one on these two axes. Now I can just fill this and fill this and after I bevel this with subdivision surface, it's gonna look very nice. Now when we subdivide this, it looks a little bit too thin. It looks a little bit stupid. So let's just make it a little bit thicker. Give me an extra loop cut over here. Then select everything in the front, control plus and just pull this backwards a little bit more. And now we're gonna add some extra thickness to this and it's gonna start to look very nice. Now we're going to bevel all of the 90 degree edges. We can just join this to correct the topology here. So we got only quads and we should be good Good to go. I think it's gonna be a good idea to get back here later and use a normal map to add some kind of knurling or something so you have a bit of a better grip when you hold this. The last thing you need is you're reloading, you're about to pull this and it just snaps, slips out of your fingers. And that split second that you just missed on your reload time gets you shot in the head. Now let's move over here to the back and make the butt stock. And this should be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna have to duplicate this surface from the back of the receiver here. And we're gonna separate that to a new object and we just have to extrude that a little bit apply the mirror modifier and I'm gonna go with alt s to make this a little bit thicker because it looks like it's supposed to be a bit thicker than the rest of this stuff you already got a half a million edges on this shit isn't that crazy how many do you think we're gonna have by the end of this it's gonna be over a million for sure now again I can't really see what the next layer is so I'm just gonna kind of imagine something and my imagination tells me this I'll take this surface over here I'll scale it down just a little bit separated to new object this is going to be smaller and we're going to slide this one down and then this goes down a little bit further and maybe we're going to extrude it one more time. And at the bottom, we have this type of shape, which kind of resembles the railing on the top. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't actually have the gun in my hand, so I can't really find a reference for this. I'm just making it up. Don't call me out in the comments. But if you do have this gun at home, send me a picture on Instagram. I'll take this, I'll inset it, loop tools, circle. And for some reason, I feel the need to make a circular hole here. So I'm going to delete that. Then we're just going to extrude this a little bit, select all the sharp edges, shift G and control B to bevel it and we're good to go. Now behind this, we just have several layers of like circular rings with some knurling and with some holes and different type of shit. This is gonna be pretty simple. So let's just go over that super quick. First, we're going to add one circle and this is going to be the one with the rings here. And this is probably the type of shit you wanna make as a normal map. But I'm gonna go with 128 vertices, scale this down, rotate it by 90. And now we're going to extrude this circle a little bit. We're gonna select all the edges on the sides of this little cylinder that we just made. Control B to make a tiny bevel on them. Then go to Control I to invert the selection. Deselect the faces in the front and the back. 
and just take these and extrude them out, Alt S. Maybe with individual origins, we're gonna make them a little bit thinner like this. We can also make them a little bit smaller this way, and this is gonna be good enough for now. Now we're just going to need a very basic, simple ring, but we're going to make that from the next shape, and the next shape is going to be pretty interesting because the next shape is a ring, and I think it has four dents. So every quarter has a dent. And if this circle has 32 vertices, or this cylinder has 32 vertices. I think we can take two sides on every quarter and use those to make these little dents. Now, if you have too many vertices to be able to tell what is exactly the quarter, here's what you can do. We have 32 faces. We're gonna go to select, check or deselect. So if we're selecting four times two faces, that means a total of eight faces is gonna be selected. And the other 24 faces are going to be deselected. So we're gonna have six deselected, two selected, six deselected, two selected, and so on. So we can type in six here, and two here, or two here, and six here. And I do have to fuck with the offset a little bit for this to work properly. For some reason, it's not giving me the right result. So here's another way to do this. Maybe I just don't know how to use this tool properly, but anyway. You can also just make a plane and turn it sideways. And you can use the corners of this plane to tell you exactly where the quarters are. So we're going to select those vertices on the corners, and Control Plus and Edge Select Mode is gonna give us the exact faces that we wanna select. Then just extrude those, scale them down, and this is going to be the gap like this. Now we can go ahead and extrude some more shit out of this shape. I'm gonna make a loop cut here, I'm gonna bevel that. Then I'll bevel each of those new edge loops again. And these I'm going to scale up like this. Then we get to the final segment, which is gonna be this part here. And here we're gonna have to make a bunch of these little round dents over here. So to make those, I'm going to separate a segment of three or four edges like this. I'll mark the edge loops here, mark seam. You have to make sure that your origin point is exactly in the middle of the circle. Select that segment, Control I, delete everything else. I'll make a loop cut over here on the middle. I'll inset these two faces and B to uncheck boundary. And I'll just push this backwards a little bit. Now when I delete this and I put some subdivision surface on it, maybe I'll add some more loop cuts like this. I'll just extrude this inwards a little bit, delete the faces in the back. And that's all I really need here. Now I'm gonna go to front view here and put my 3D cursor in the middle of what used to be the circle here. Alt E, spin, use duplicates. And in this case, I need eight instances before I complete the circle again. So now I can just remove the doubles, clear seam, and we have this little piece back here, which looks really nice with subdivision surface. And now we get to one of the treats here, which is gonna be the butt stock. Now, when you fire a gun, it kicks back. And the force with which it kicks back is the exact same force that the bullet is pushed out with. Now, if you ever shot a gun, you know that kickback can be pretty damn tough. Maybe not on a gun like this, but on a shotgun, it's pretty fucking tough. Now, all of that force that you feel is distributed over the area of the buttstock. And that's why a bigger buttstock makes it more comfortable because it's less pressure on a specific area. It's more distributed on your shoulder and your chest. But this is the exact same force that is applied to the point of the bullet. So imagine this, instead of the buttstock pushing back into your shoulder, this exact amount of force is applied to the tip of the bullet. So if you don't have an actual bullet, take something which is pointy like a bullet and just gently push it into your shoulder. And you're gonna notice it doesn't take much force at all for this to hurt because all that force is concentrated onto this sharp tip on the, the point here. Now, can you imagine the impact of a bullet flying at 950 meters per second or whatever? You're fucked if this thing hits you. So the lesson learned here is don't get shot. Now at the top here, I'm going to add a plane. Right off the bat, I'm going to delete one half and add a mirror modifier. And I'm going to push this outwards like this. Then I wanna have a loop cut right over here. And I'm making a horizontal loop cut so that when I push this backwards, I'm also gonna have an edge for this part over here later. Now I'll slide this backwards and we need to fill in this surface in the front here like this, because this is going to continue to go down, but this part in the front here is gonna be a different shape. This is gonna be like a triangle. This is what I figured out from my reference on the side. And just so you know what I'm talking about, here's a reference that I'm using on Instagram on my second screen. This has to go approximately this far down. And I'm gonna bring all of this geometry just a little bit closer. It's not supposed to be that thick yet. Now I can make this triangle over here and I'll extrude a point from this triangle sideways like this to make this other surface down here. I'll make sure that these two are aligned and I now figured out that this is probably supposed to be a lot thicker. So I kind of fucked up when I made this thinner. So I'll push this way further out like this. I'm going to fill this area over here and extrude this backwards like this. Also, we're gonna fill this triangle in the front here. And now we're going to take these two edges and extrude them backwards for this part in the back here. Another loop cut over here and we're gonna be able to make this part down here. But this is probably some kind of weird angle. So I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. Now I'll put my 3D cursor on this plane and that way I can extrude this and scale it on two axes to push it in that direction further. And I'll push it to the bottom here. I'll slide this edge. And now I'm gonna see what this looks like with my subdivision surface. This this part is very important because this is supposed to fit with this semicircle up here. And after we bevel this in a second, look how nice that's going to look. But let's just take care of some more geometry super quick before we get to that. We're gonna have to fill all this stuff over here in the back. And I'm gonna push this edge loop a little bit further up to make this look a bit more round. At the bottom of the buttstock, we have another pretty simple shape. 
And to make that, I'm just going to borrow some of the geometry from over here. I'll duplicate this, separate the new object, get rid of all the extra edge loops over here. I just want to have a simple frame. Maybe I'll push it a little bit in words like this. Then I'll extrude that, bring it over here. Just shoot it one more time to bring it over here to the front. Then we can just bevel everything. Then I'm going to select the geometry from the sides. Then I'll apply the mirror modifier, remove any doubles. I'll select all the faces from the sides and from the top, but not the faces from the front on the other side. This way, when I inset, I'm going to get an extra set of faces over here. Just make sure edge rail is checked for this. The reason I'm doing this is so I can have this extra little edge over here. I'm looking at something like this in my reference image. I'm going to take the faces which I just inset and I'm going to extrude them outwards a little bit. I also think this is supposed to be a lot thinner, so we're going to bring it inwards like this. There's a little hole back here, so just give me one loop cut this way and another loop cut this way. I'm going to bevel both of those loop cuts like this. We have four perfect faces that we can use for this circle. So inset those, loop tools, circle, and then loop tools, bridge. And now we have a little circular hole all the way through here. Here's how we're going to create this part in the back of the buttstock. I'm first going to model the side surface, and this is going to consist of multiple layers. So I'll have to do multiple surfaces separately, and then we're going to extrude those and connect everything and turn it into an actual 3D object. So we're going to start up here by just adding a plane, rotate that, and we need a couple of loop cuts to align it with this part up here. Even though this looks curved in the back, this is supposed to be a straight line. Then we're going to add a loop cut over here. One face is going to go down. One of these edges needs to be extruded down a couple of times. That's going to create this dented area. And then there's going to be a different surface going forward over here. This second edge, we also need to extrude it forward. That's going to create this part in the front here. And then we're going to extrude this down. Now let's bring this to the side so we can adjust the shape. This is supposed to stick out at an angle like this, and this one is supposed to go inwards a little bit. It's important that the edge loops on this surface over here align almost perfectly with the edge loops on this object in the front. That way when we subdivide this, this is going to look very well connected. Then I'm going to add a loop cut over here. So we're going to slide this to the end and this edge down. Then we have a nice quad and we don't have any weird twisting on our faces. And this gives us the shape for the first part of this surface. And we're just going to have to add some geometry over here so that we can cut out this hole. So we're going to move these and make it into a bit of a round shape. Now we can extrude this and push it inwards a little bit. We're going to extrude these two edges down and I'll fill this face inset with the boundary unchecked, but we're going to delete the inner face because this is supposed to be the hole. Let's also make sure this is completely flat on the X axis. Now this geometry over here is supposed to make up a perfect circle. Currently we have one, two, three, four, five, six edges up here. And if these are the side edges, that means we need another one, two, three, four edges at the bottom. So this is going to be a circle with 10 vertices. So add a circle with 10 vertices, turn it sideways. In this case, we're going to rotate it by another 90 degrees so we have these vertical edges on the sides which are going to connect with these vertical edges here let's put that into place like this and now we're going to snap the vertices from the mesh that we just created onto the circle so that the mesh can take the shape of a circle these we're going to lower down here and then snap them now we can continue extruding this and just align it with the other vertices of the circle and at the bottom we're going to extrude it one more time scale it to zero on the z-axis and that give us the lower line of this surface inside here now first of all all this has to be a bit angled so we're going to start with a loop cut like this and delete all this extra geometry then we're going to add an extra loop cut over here push it all the way to the side but then bring it backwards a little bit and this is going to allow us to create this extra side on the back over here so put the 3d cursor here delete this face add a loop cut like this push it to the side and scale this to zero on the x-axis, then merge vertices by distance. Now we need to duplicate these edges and push them even further inwards. And we can of course bridge these two edge loops. And we're gonna extrude this down, place the 3D cursor over here and rotate this a little bit. I'm going to extrude all this and bring it to the front here. Then this edge loop needs to get extruded and pushed down a little bit further. And then I'll make a horizontal loop cut like this. And that way I can inset these faces here. And currently if you make a hole here, it's not gonna have the same thickness all the way through. So I'll take these edges over here and duplicate them and bring them to the back then i'll delete these edges i'll connect everything with the edges that i just duplicated and now i can use my g stretch tool on this edge loop to turn it into a straight line as well as this edge loop down here to turn that into a straight line now this whole shape has a constant thickness so i'm going to slide these backwards a little bit and these in the front here now i'm going to add an extra loop cut over here and prepare this geometry so i can extrude this shape down here now this surface that we just created is supposed to have an angle more like this we're going to select this surface and rotate it a little bit so it matches the angle of the rest of the buttstock and this is also something that we have to do with the rest of the geometry up here we're going to use our 3d cursor to extend this geometry from up here a little bit further now we can fill that with a face we can also connect this edge with this geometry down here to do that we need a loop cut up here and another loop cut down here now just snap all this shit together so it connects now we're going to start adding some thickness to the shape 
So I'll take an edge from down here, extrude it, scale it to zero on the x-axis, while my 3D cursor is the pivot point and it's placed in the middle of this object. We're gonna have to add a whole bunch of geometry here so we can do a solid grid fill. Then I'll extrude some of these edges that I made over here downwards and shape them like this little thing here. I'll try to figure out a decent way to fill all this stuff in. Now I'm gonna push a lot of this geometry inwards because this shape is thick as fuck right now. And hopefully that's gonna be a bit better now. Now we're gonna take some of these edges over here and we're gonna start filling this surface in. But first let's align these edges up here with the rest of the buttstock. So we're gonna push them inwards a little bit like this and try to get them as close as possible so that when you look at it from the back view, they're going to nicely fall into place with whatever's happening up here. A good way to do that is to use a 3D cursor to align all this with the geometry on the front part of the buttstock here. So I'll place my 3D cursor on this edge loop over here, for example, then I'll take this one from the other object. And by the way, you can go to edit mode with two objects at the same time. Obviously you can't connect them because they're different objects, but we can take an edge loop from over here when our 3D cursor is snapped to one of these vertices and we can extrude that edge loop, scale it to align it with this edge loop here and then snap all this shit around to connect it a bit better. Now you can see that this geometry here is perfectly connected. So when we subdivide this, this is gonna be really nice. Now I'll start filling this stuff in by also snapping and aligning shit with the 3D cursor. We're gonna take these edge loops from the holes that we created earlier. And once we filled all the shit at the top of this object, we're gonna take these edge loops from the holes that we made earlier, extrude those, bring them to the middle. I'm also going to make this shape a little bit beveled. And now we should be able to take everything and mirror it across the 3D cursor and hopefully everything's gonna be connected. Look at that, doesn't that look pretty cool? I know this thing is probably a bit thicker than it's supposed to be, but I don't really give a shit. I think it looks really good, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Now, after we subdivide this and add smooth shading, we're still gonna have to add some bevels and some supporting loops and all this. So I'm gonna have to select a whole bunch of geometry, which I'm going to simultaneously bevel. And that way we can give everything a tiny little bevel, but there's not going to be any end gons, any weird twisting on triangles. All the mirrors are gonna be perfect and it's gonna be only quads. And we might have to manually fix up some of the geometry by adding some extra edge loops and loop cuts and connecting shit together. But all in all, this is a good example of why topology is super important because if our topology was fucked up, we wouldn't be able to bevel everything like this. I'm just going to separately bevel these holes and look at how beautiful that geometry looks. I want to have an extra bevel over here, but that's going to be disconnected from everything else. So we're gonna manually join the vertices here because I want this bevel to have a different width from all the other bevels. Let's take a close up look at this glorious shape. I'm proud of this and I think even Thomas Colin would be proud of me for this one. You guys gotta be honest, where else on YouTube did you see some shit as crazy as this? Check out the fucking ebook. If this doesn't show you I know what I'm doing, then I don't know what does. Now to make the handguard, first of all, we're gonna have to copy some of the railing and bring it over here to this side. Then I'm gonna cut the sides and then I'll use these edges down here to extrude some more geometry downwards and I'll use that new geometry to make the holes. Now we just need a couple of horizontal loop cuts and then we can just delete the faces on the inside and then rearrange all these vertices until they have the shape of the hole in the handguard. Once you have the hole, we can just push this entire surface outwards a little bit because we're gonna try to match this same shape over here. So to make that more accurate, we can just use our 3D cursor over here to align that. Then we're gonna go to front view and we're gonna use our shear tool to kind of adjust the angle of this face. Now I'm going to duplicate this surface and move it inwards and I'll extrude this and bring it to the middle. This is going to be the inside of the handguard. Once we have those two surfaces, we're gonna bridge these edge loops like this and we're going to bevel these edges to make this part of it sharper. Now I can just duplicate this and snap that selection to this vertex over here. And we're going to continue doing that by just stacking these objects until we get all the way to the end of the rifle. So we duplicated one hole, we got two holes. Then we duplicated two holes, we got four holes. Now we gotta duplicate these one more time to have eight holes. So duplicate the four holes, snap them over here to this vertex, join these together, merge vertices by distance, and you're gonna be good to go. Now we're gonna have to reshape some geometry back here because we have this part which attaches the handguard to the receiver. Now I've arranged my topology over here in a way that's going to allow me to place my 3D cursor over here and extrude this surface up here. And when I flatten that out, I'll be able to use that to create this side here. Now since this is a flat surface on the side here, we can just push these faces down and that's gonna give us the shape at the bottom here. And once we have all this geometry down here, we're just gonna use that to create some of the details like this surface and this square shape over here. So the square shape just has to go inwards a little bit and maybe we can inset that. Then we're going to duplicate this circle and make it a tiny bit smaller, fill it, extrude it inwards, then push this part out a little bit and this is where we're supposed to have a hole. So we're gonna extrude that inwards. Now we're gonna have to bevel the edges so when we subdivide this, this is gonna be sharp. 
and with subdivision surface these details look pretty good there's two more things that we need the barrel and the magazine since we're already working with the handguard let's go on to the barrel first i'm going to create a cylinder and i'll give that something like 16 vertices because you already know i'm gonna subdivide the fuck out of this and we're going to scale this circle down so it fits with the beginning of the barrel here and this is just going to be the type of shit you learn in your first blender tutorial so i'm just gonna be scaling this extrude it out extrude it out scale it again push it out over here on the side, I'm gonna flatten this part, and I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Then we're gonna extrude it a bit further. We're gonna make a loop cut here, extrude this set of faces and scale it up on two axes, but not the Y axis. Then scale this circle, push it out forwards, and now we get to the part where we have some holes in the barrel. So to do that, I'm just going to make a big cylinder here in the front, then I'll make a loop cut which I'm going to bevel and I'll push that inwards a little bit to make a little separate segment over here. Then I can just subdivide this with some more loop cuts like this and I'm going to inset those surfaces and I'm going to push some of these vertices inwards so that way when I delete this stuff over here, I can subdivide it and the holes are going to be pretty round. Now we're just going to do some shit over here at the end to make a hole where the bullet's going to come out of. But I'm going to select all of this stuff and I'll squeeze it inwards just a little bit. And now if I bridge all the edge loops between these holes on the inner layer and the outer layer, now I can subdivide this and I'm still going to have to bevel some of these edges. And when we add smooth shading, this looks ready to go. Now for some of you guys, the magazine might seem like the hardest part of modeling a gun. But that's why you got me. I'm going to model this one. And if you can do this, if you can repeat what I'm doing, you're going to be able to model pretty much any magazine in the world. They're all the same shit. So I'm going to start with a plane which I'm going to rotate so it's facing me. Then I'll take the bottom vertices and I'm going to align that with this line at the bottom of the magazine here. Then I'll take the top vertices and I'm going to place them so that the edge that connects them is going to align with this second line on this frame. I'll extrude that edge from the top and I'll do the same thing with this next bar. And then I'll bring it to the top to this line over here. And then we can extrude this top edge and bring it into the magazine. At which point we can just extrude it up and push it all the way up. It would probably be a good idea to just have one edge over here and remove these because we're going to subdivide this. And after I subdivide this, I'll extrude it to give this thing some thickness, but delete the faces at the top and the bottom and place some vertical loop cuts on these lines right here on the magazine. We're gonna bevel this one to match the width of this trench. And these three back here, we're gonna give them a tiny bevel so that they can make this frame here. Select the corners of the magazine and mark the mean crease and set that shit to one. We don't want this to be subdivided yet. We're later gonna make a bevel on this to make it round. For now, apply the subdivision surface because that's gonna give us more geometry that we can use to create these horizontal lines. Lines here. Now I'm going to select the horizontal edges which are going to create this grid pattern on the side of the magazine and in that selection I'm going to also include these vertical face loops. So now I can extrude this, right click, alt s to push it outwards. Make sure to check even offset that you might want to adjust your numbers over here. We're gonna select all of this shit so we can delete faces and that's gonna delete the faces that were created over here from using alt s. Now I'm going to add a loop cut on the back of the magazine and I'll scale that to zero on the x-axis so it's a perfectly straight line. I'm going to extrude this vertex while my 3D cursor is placed at another point on this horizontal cut. I'll scale it up on the y and the z-axis to push it outwards a little bit. And once I do that, I can delete this back part and fill in a face over here. I'll also delete these faces over here. And I'll repeat the same step on the next segment. Now I'll place my 3D cursor on the middle part over here. And I'll select all the horizontal edges. Extrude, right-click, scale to zero on the x-axis. And now we have a beautiful vertical set of faces in the back here, which we can extrude right click alt s to push it out and that's going to give us this last step on the back of the magazine and later we're going to bevel this to make a nice smooth edge over here now we can take an entire segment of edges from down here and we can extrude that down to the next part and i'm going to inset this just a little bit and if i select these two edge loops that go this way that go through the curve i can add a tiny little bevel and that bevel i'm going to extrude inwards to create the gap between these two parts as you can see in the reference image here so now we can add some subdivision surface to this go to object shade smooth and now I need to add some supporting geometry and the easiest way to do that is to just create loop cuts like this and then you want to bevel those loop cuts one by one. So we're going to bevel this on Control B, bring it close to the sides and we're going to do the same thing on these vertical bumps. I also don't want this to stretch so much so I'm going to add some supporting loops this way as well. Try to get it so that this edge has the same length as this edge and that way you're going to have a nice even curve here. And now once you fill all this shit in, you can duplicate this, mirror it to the other side Correct the normals, remove any doubles, and what do you know, the model is ready, let's go shoot somebody in the head. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel, check out my Patreon page, and let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video. I'll see you guys in the next one.